Hello guys, this is Richard back at you. We got Jay Lee's uh, 15 uh, GMC 2500 in the house, 60 motor. Uh, it's got a couple tranny codes in it, I believe. Uh, pressure control, cylinder valve stuck off, transmit control, mods are requested, stuff like that, any lock brakes, uh, EVAP, just a few codes like that. So, but we know the tranny's just totally cooked on this unit. If you look at the fluid right here, it is just black as black can get. Just really nasty. Now this is a work truck. You can see here it goes down a lot of dirt roads. This thing is just packed with dirt. You'd think that thing would have been leaking like crazy with that much dirt around it. That tells you how good them seals are. They can live like that. So, but anyway, this is a 6L90 unit. Big old transmission. Uh, the difference is uh, between the 80 and the 90, it's got deeper pan, a uh, different valve body set up. Uh, the tail housing adapter in the back's different. Did I miss another one? Let's see, where's that bolt at? Let's see if there's one under here. No. There it is right there. I knew I'd missed one of them things. Like 20 of them holding it on on the 6L90. Great big old tail housing. I say this is a four-wheel drive. Now the four-wheel drives will have a seal here in the back where the two-wheel drives will not. They leave the seal out that way it lubricates the rear tail housing bushing. And let me tell you, these things are even feel the difference in them when you start picking them up and throwing them around. What do you think the pan's going to look like, Peyton? I don't know. You don't know? Look at that metal. If you service your 6080, 6090 and your pan looks like that, you already know you're on borrowed time. Because it is definitely coming. Of course, you can see all the metal down inside the filter. Just plumb full of metal. It's pouring it out. All kinds of glitter there. A couple of tens out of the way. One ten anyway for a minute. Let's get this eight out of the way here. Your detent spring. We will get, where is this one at? This is our socket here that takes all of our valve body bolts off. But first, let's go ahead and get the linkage all unhooked. So you push on this piece here and you can pull up on it, unlock it, and just grab you some pliers. Tap on this a little bit, just kind of loosen it. Get you some pliers and just be gentle on it, pull it out. Real simple. Two O-rings here, a square cut O-ring here. So, and then two O-rings here. So they're in your overhaul kit. <laughs> so neutral safety switch here. Just push on this little lock right here sideways. Once you do that, you can grab it and squeeze and pull it off. Real simple. This bracket right here locks on here too, like that. Then you got this piece here trying to hold the wiring out of the way too. Then this locks into your uh, manual valve linkage, sets in there like that the way it moves. Pretty simple. Of course, we have all of our bolts that hold the valve. Back. Make sure I didn't miss one. Of course, we have our input and output speed sensors here. We have our dowels here that align it up to the case. We have our case to valve body seals. Another set here in the case here for your low reverse and your two six clutch. 
can tell these get really smashed really bad too after a while they start leaking across and all kinds of stuff so this right here that you got two eight millimeters over here on the side that just keeps the uh, tech on push to the, that way all the way that way when you tighten it down it goes flush downward even with the valve body um, and we have some 10 millimeters here have some sevens here Always just keep these bolts together, kind of throw them in their own little pile. That way it's easy to grab them. These are your longer, a little bit longer bolts than your sevens. You can, there are just two of them, so they're pretty easy to pick out. And then of course, uh, your tecum, your solenoids, your uh, pillow switches and stuff like that. This had a code in it, so we're just gonna get rid of it and just replace it. Uh, once we get it replaced, we'll have to take it and have it flashed. That way the computer and the Compu uh, vehicle computer they know each other work really good together <coughs> got the 10 up on the mountain and we got the 7 <coughs> here <coughs> kind of like in a little circle pretty easy to remember keep them separate if you want to and we got a bunch of them across here <coughs> had room for a couple more that way like I say it's close to Friday and mama's already calling me or close to five excuse me and mama's already calling me going to want to know where are we going to eat at Hunter hey so she must be taking me out to dinner huh yeah. yay <laughs> I'll get this off there Uh, the main thing on this, the valve body part, that um, what I like about Sonex is they, they, they give you all the in plug caps that have O-rings and stuff on them. So any one of them that's got a shuttle valve through here, this one, this one, this one, this one here, uh, Sonex uh, supplies an in plug kit with an O-ring on it to seal the, the ends of these off right through here. Uh, they offer a, a bunch more things too. So their zip kits are really nice. Not hard to put in. I think any amateur could do it. That's what's nice is uh, these companies are building these kits. They're, they're pretty rough to put in, kind of, but still, somebody with not a whole lot of knowledge can do it. It just listen to it, uh, not listen, but uh, pay attention to the instructions and stuff like that. Pretty simple to do it. Take your time. This one here is stuck all the way back. There it goes. But anyway, you got your valve body plate here. I uh, really don't ever see much wear here, but we do have uh, some information on some things that are going on with this plate right here that we wanted to get every, everybody's attention on. So everybody's starting to show this problem. Uh, we seen it in a meeting here a while back. You can see this hole right here. It's probably 11 thousandths. I mean, it's tiny, tiny. And plus the machine that made the plate uh, beat the hole up so it shrunk it even more than what it's supposed to be. So just drill this hole out to 30 thousandths and you'll be fine. You can see here, uh, it's got the eighth check ball here. It's got the small hole beside it. You can see the check ball here. Should have been one here too. It must have rolled out or it disappeared. Let me look for it. Let me roll it over and count them. So we got one here, 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 here. Here, 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 and here. Let's see if this one's missing or it fell somewhere. There, there it is. It, it just fell out. So they're all there. We got all eight check balls. Let's 
same way, like I said, with this valve body here, um, your zip kit's going to come with all your end plugs with O-rings. It's also going to come with a new valve that goes here. So, like I said, just read your instructions, take your time with it. It's pretty simple. The paperwork kind of scares you a little bit, but it, it's really simple. There's more pages in, uh, than there is instructions, maybe. I don't know. It can be intimidating, but it's really not intimidating. How's that sound? Okay. We've got uh, a few more of these units that we're going to be doing too this week. All into next week. We got new bell housings here, a few more new bell housings and stators over there. We've got a lot of parts coming in. I said it's amazing a seal can even keep fluid pressure in when there's that much dirt around it. Now there is a snap ring that holds that seal in. So we'll get right to the pump. And uh, look at it. That's our main wear source. And then I grab these bolts and kind of set them over to the side. Now these are different. They got a little bit longer and thicker shank on them. You can see it here. These bolts are totally different than any other bolt in the unit. So, what do you think it's going to look like? Let's see. Of course, we know it's going to be rutted between here and here. You can just see it on both sides. Let's see what our pressure rate. Oh, it's war pump out too. See this little roll pin right there? Right there? When I turn it over and push the boost valve in, it'll fall out. See if it fell out. Then you can grab the boost valve and pull it out. You got your boost valve in there. Now your zip kit will come with a new boost valve. And then here's the boost valve. This is these boost valves when they come out, they are war plumb out. It's crazy. Here is one that we just did the unit before this one. You can see how bad it's wore out here. And then here's the one I just pulled out. It's wore out really bad here on the high side. Low side's wore out on one side, kind of good on the other. But look how that's wore out. Now here's a, a new one that come out. We, uh, these stators come loaded, so they come with all new valves and springs in them, but we changed the valves out, uh, put new Sonex up. Uh, valves and boost valves and stuff in them so they don't go they don't leave with stock stuff in them we take it out but you can see what a stock valve looks like so really wore out stators wore out we know the bell housing and pump all that stuff's going to be just wiped out paddles i throw it all down in there a lot of wear in here. You can see where the converter was going in, stopping right there. Could have spaced it a little bit, but being that it's factory, that ain't gonna happen. Now we'll space it if it uh, we look at it and it needs to be spaced. We'll take the time to do it. It's not that hard to do. You just gotta take the effort. No pump slides really wore out towards the bottom through here. Looks pretty good on this side. Pivot pin here, starting to get some wear. So replace all of those two. Of course, you can see here how wore out that is. I mean, it's just rutted all the way through. 
So we already knew that this part was going to be wore out too, pretty much. And that's why we keep so many of the, the new bell housings and stuff in stock. I think we've got 20 or 30 more upstairs. So if you want your 6080, 6090 rebuilt with GM parts, come by and see me. All the other parts are going to be aftermarket, but the bell housing and stuff is physically going to be brand new. Okay. Let's do a small test on this. See if we got any cracks or anything. We'll just kind of put a tool in here. It goes in really easy. Put this on there and holds it. And we can air check this drum that way and kind of see if we got any cracks. We had a drum, uh, the last unit I did, the clutches were all burned up in here. But physically, we had no cracks, no wear, or anything. We just had wore out clutches and stuff. And it was mainly because the filter got stopped up. But what we like to do is put a little fluid around here. So you can just look for any type of wear or any air bubbles coming out of there. Get the right ones. There we go. It's on the bottom here. If it's cracked or anything, you'll see bubbles coming out of here. Top one, bottom one down here, I mean. So it looks really good. It's holding pressure. You got a little weep hole here. You see that little hole? Anytime you hit this one here, you're going to have stuff come out of there. So pretty simple. I always like to air check it when I take it apart. That way uh, I know that I'm pretty confident that we don't have any cracks or anything anyway. Snap ring issues we're having big time with. And it's not that the snap ring's breaking or anything. It's just when we get our new clutch kits in, the clutches seem to be thicker and they're always tightening up the drums tighter than they need to be. And we're hunting thinner snap rings and stuff to loosen up these clutch packs. But we're starting to see that quite a bit. I mean, like every unit almost. So. We have our first, second, third, fourth clutch here. Got your wave here. Third, fifth, and reverse clutch here. Got a wave here. Always keep your snap rings with your drums and your clutch packs. Got our six pinion planet. So we really don't see much wear in these here. Uh, even the sun gears, we don't see a lot of wear here. So just want to always look at things. Of course, we have our uh, four, five, six, four, five, six clutch, and it looks smoked. But we're going to blow some air in here and test it. Kind of pressurize it up, see if it'll hold. It is holding good. So it, does, it means that the drum isn't uh, leaking. Uh, it just means that the clutch pack is wore out itself. Now, these trannies will adapt to a lot of wear and... and Add more fluid and stuff like that to make up uh, clutch pack wear and stuff like that. But when these filters get stopped up for metal and stuff, nothing can survive. Clutch pack there. Come on. There we go. And we have our four, five, six clutch hub here. Let me get this little snap ring out of here. This is kind of a weird little drum here. You always want to clean it because there's tons of metal in here. And you also want to notice that the, a tiny clutch in here runs on the bottom of the drum there. It's actually got another one. looks like a clutch there. They clean all the metal out of there, put it all back together, make sure your bearings and stuff are good, replace them, put the snap ring back in. Now, if you can do a Sonex upgrade right here uh, to a billet shaft with the same clutches, you can go a billet shaft with power guard clutches. And there's multiple ways you can uh, upgrade that 456 clutch drum. So, 
scotch brite all your areas where your bushings are going to run. Look here for anywhere where your clutches lock into your shells. Same way here on this one. Scotch brite it here and here. Check this bushing out for wear, this bushing here for wear. Replace them. I say, when you replace these bushings, make sure you have a, uh, a bushing driver that's made for the bushing because some of them are stepped, some of them are put in flush, and some of them are actually uh, lower than the, the height at the top. So, I mean. See that? There we go. Get something to soak some of that oil up out of there. Can't see it. Pretty stuck pretty hard right there too. Normally they come out a little easier than that. Okay. My shoulder being messed up, it's kind of hard to grab it and pull it out of there. There we go. That's one stiff snap ring right there, guys. Say so beveled on the top, flat on the bottom. Gonna pull our 2 6 clutch out. So we said, we've seen this uh, clutch drum come in with the wave uh, destroyed. So you always want to look for that. Keep your snap ring with your clutches. These little bushings right here, they're really tough, guys. Even when you put them in with bushing drivers, man, it just seems like this edge, it, this bushing fits really tight. It seems like I always have to fit the bushing to the, to the shell there. I mean, it's terrible. It's been an hour on a bushing. And I even got the right bushing drivers and everything. It's terrible. So, Got your low reverse clutch. So these clutches new soaked in oil look used. So don't, don't let that scare you. Huh. We have our lower sprag assembly here. That'll fall down, this will flip out. Grab my snap ring pliers here and just kind of hook it in there and pull on that. Hook it in there, pull on it, grab it with your finger. Oops, come on. There we go, look at that. Like I said, just because you see, you see the wear here where it's been running, you can physically, if this looks good on this side, all you gotta do is flip it over because your snap ring's gonna run in a different area, your thrust washer's gonna run in a new area. So just look at it really close and see if you can just flip it over. Because a lot of times you can. So you got your single row sprag down in here. So you got to put it in the press, take it apart. There's a bonded piston down in there. Now this piston here come right out. It's bonded too. Come on. Usually comes right out. Just give it a tug. There you go. Pretty simple. Uh, we, like I say, anytime we got aluminum surface where a piston's going to be running, we scotch brite this in here on both sides. That way, this new seal will have somewhere to run instead of just running on the old shiny uh, area it used to run. So just remember that. Of course, we're going to get this big old planetary out of here. Okay, we're going to get the ring gear out of here too. Now on the four-wheel drives, remember, you're always going to have a seal here in the back. On the two-wheel drives, the seal will be missing. I don't know if you left it, as long as you can seal your housing, I guess, back here, if you left the seal out, it'd be okay, but uh, on the, on the two-wheel drives, there's no seal because they use that pressure to lubricate the tail housing bushing. Okay. Always clean this up really good. This area here always holds a ton of metal down through here. Replace your bushing here. If you notice this bushing here is, isn't uh, flush, it's stepped. 
So my bushing driver I have will put that bushing down below flush surface. So that's what I'm saying. You always gotta make sure you do that stuff. And then uh, on our rear planetary assembly, we start changing every one of these back covers right here to the Sonex uh, lube dam cover. I'm out of, out of one right now. My earlier video, I had one. I got seven more coming. That'll be here Monday. So all these units are gonna be getting our Sonex cover, lube dam cover. Uh, there's just so much metal back here. I actually got the old cover off the other unit. You can see here just how much metal is stuck behind this cover. Now, I also did get a tool that I started fabricating up. When you get the cover, uh, they got instructions of using a 6L80 uh, apply plate and uh, a 4T60 drum or something. Uh, but what I got is I got a C6 uh, direct drum backing plate. And I got a 4T60 one two drum and it fits really good. I, I chamfered it here. So it fits right in this chamfer like that. It just centers itself. This sets on here like this. And then I get my bushing driver and I set it on there and then I press it in. Now when it pops on, you think it's, it's, it's messing it up, but actually once it, it goes over the lip, it boom, it just goes right on and it's nice and flush. But since I, I figured this out, me and T Trent's gonna come in here and TIG this up really nice and uh, make it a tool now. So we'll have a tool that we can just do that every time and just knock it out a lot quicker. So that's an easy one to make right there. But this cover has got a ton of metal in it. There's physically no way to get it out. Uh, you wanna look at all your gears, make sure they look good, any pitting. In fact, my gloves are really dirty, so I'm definitely gonna have to get in here and look at this stuff. So, but anyway, guys, um, there's a lot of parts to a 6L80, 6L90 train and the steps it takes to, to really get one back together and, and make it nice. But anyway, Peyton, you know we want to thank you for court recording. We just love it when you're up here. Thumbs up, right? That's what I was thinking. But anyway, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, push that notification bell because we've got a ton more to go. Have a great day.